So, okay. yes, the next Let's presentation is about Mind4. Go ahead, uh, yeah, thank you. Um, and welcome to this session about a uh, quick introduction about Mindspore. Uh, so quickly, uh, I'm JB. Uh, I'm open to Spike for Huawei. Um, actually, I'm Apache Foundation member uh, for a while, and uh, I'm working on roughly 20 Apache projects from, uh, I would say, big data, microservices, integration, whatever. Some that you probably know. So when we talk about uh, Mindspore, we have to talk about deep learning. Uh, which is a special kind of AI. So uh, it, the purpose is to imitate what the humans uh, are doing. So basically, if we, we compare traditional machine learning and uh, deep learning, in traditional machine learning, we have linear algorithm, whereas in deep learning, we have a hierarchy of algorithm. It's what we name the network. And uh, uh, for instance, a classic example is this is a ima image recognition uh, system. So you say, okay, this is a dog, yes or no, this is a dog, yes or no. And so thanks to that, you can train the model uh, depending on what you submit. Uh, why deep learning now is pretty important is because first, today, we have a dramatic increase of the, the computing capacity. If we compare a simple phone today, it's maybe, 100% more powerful than what we have five years ago. Uh, so it means that the deep learning can be implemented on any devices, including a uh, phone. We also see a lot of uh, huge amount of data. Uh, I mean, if you compare today in 2020, we estimate that we have 44 gigabyte of data and we plan to have 180 in five years. So it means that we have to process this large amount of data. And also the algorithms. They are beginning to be more and more complex with a large number of parameters, probably more than before. So it means that we also can implement AI and deep learning in a bunch of different scenarios. So classically, we did image classification and we're still doing that, okay? We, we do image classification, speech recognition, and reading comprehension, but these basic use cases, they are not basic in terms of implementation, but in terms of AI, could be applied in a lot of different scenarios in the industries. So we can see smart campus, uh, industrial quality inspection, uh, poor grid, autonomous driving, and so on. So it means that regarding all the capacity and the data we have today, and the different scenarios we have to address, we have to find more a framework that address these two use cases. I mean, both complex scenario and also the, uh, the, the powerful. And it's where Mindspore could be interesting. Uh, Mindspore is an open source developer friendly deep learning framework. The purpose is to really have the, the model as code and, and model pre-trained and ready to be used. And another thing which is pretty interesting is the same code can be executed on different devices and hardware. So it means that exactly the same code will be translated for CPU, GPU, or in specific um, uh, processor. So today in, I think I, I checked last, uh, the data last week, it was more than 160 pre-trained models that you can use in Mindspore. So it means that you can start from existing models, you can add your data sets, and you can reuse it uh, directly. So if we take a look about the different components in Mindspore, I don't do, go too deep in the details, but basically here you have the, the, the predefined models that you can use, especially the, the model zoo is where you can find the model that you, you can directly use. In the middle there, you have all the front end. So basically it's the code that you can write. So basically it's the Python code that you can inject into your, uh, or you can define in your uh, Mindspore. And then this code is taken by uh, the runtime and the runtime is responsible to optimize your code and execute on the, the hardware that you, 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 you target. So the model zoo is a library. So it means that you have, a, uh, as I said, 160 models, pre predefined and pre-trained so that you can directly reuse. Um, it could be used as a single training or you can use for multiple training, whatever. And the thing is we also provide some kind of visualization tool that allows you to see, okay, this is the data coming into the models. This is, this is the result and uh, 
drill down into the model training. Once you have a model, I mean, to have a model, you have to create the model or to train the model. And it's where you're going to use the framework. Basically, the framework has three main layers. Oops. The, the first layer is the front end. It's basically the Python code that you're going to use. And these, in the, this Python APIs, you have two levels. So you have the first API is a unified API is for model training. And so you, you train the model, you create the model, and you export the model. And the second API is more about data processing and format of the transformation. So this is the two things. This code is not directly executed by MindSpore. The first thing, MindSpore, take your code and translate this code in, in, into what we, we name IR, intermediate representation. When, it does, when MindSpore does that, it transforms your code to include some optimization. These optimization are not yet related to the hardware. It's really an optimization of your code. So it's based on the graph and try to optimize the graph. Then once you have this intermediate representation of your code, this time is taken by the runtime and the runtime does another layer of optimization dedicated to the, the, the target hardware that you, where you want to run. So basically the second phase of optimization will be specific to one hardware, GPU, uh, CPU, and PU. I, I would like to show you a couple of key features that you can find in, in MindSport. The first thing, which is for me pretty interesting, is automatic parallelism. So today, with a large um, uh, amount of data sets, I mean, we have more and more data and more and more data sets, we can see that we have more and more training time. So it takes a, long, uh, a very long time to train the model. And so if we take time, it means that we consume a lot of resources as, as well. So it means that we have potentially a training bottleneck. So to do that, a possible solution is to distribute the training on multiple executors. So it's what MindSpo is doing, and it's doing at three potentially levels. The first level is a data parallelism. So we are talking about data set. Your data set is pretty large. Instead of processing the data set on a single machine, you're going to spread the, the data set on different machines, basically. To do that, you provide what we name a sharding. So in the code, this is the example of a code. You provide the data set. So MindSpore provides the data set API. And in the data set API, you provide the size of the, of the shard and the number of shard. And this shard will be spread on different machines. And another level that, that you can do is also the model parallelism. So the model parallelism this time is when you execute the model and the training of the model, you're going to specify the, the number of parallelism you want to do. And finally, you can combine both. So the, the third kind of parallelism is hybrid. So it means that MindSpore is able to spread the data set and also spread the model training altogether. So that's very powerful. And it dramatically reduces the training time. Another thing, which is another feature, which is pretty interesting uh, when we talk about MindSpore, is the second, second order optimization. So basically, there are two big domains, two order of optimization of the algorithms: the first order and the second order. So the first order, it works fine as soon as you have a small number of computation, and each computation is pretty high in terms of speed. Um, but the issue is, it's a low converge convergence speed. So it means that you execute a lot of time. And so it means that you need a lot of steps to train your model. So another thing that you can, so for instance, a classical algorithm to do that is the stochastic gradient descent. That's exactly the, the kind of algorithm that, that implement the first order. The second order is we deri derivative the function as a loser function, and then we can train the model with higher computation cost. So we better use the CPU basically, but it, it means that the, exec uh, the execution time is still slower because each execution is taking more data actually. So MindSpo is, is able to optimize this, this second order. So he, he implements some specific algorithm on top of the second order. That, that reduce a lot of the training uh, time. Another thing which is pretty interesting is the automatic differentiation. Today on the market, if we compare the different solutions we have, we have the first solution is 
TensorFlow. It's TensorFlow is taking a static data flows uh, during compilation. And then you apply, you perform automatic differ differentiation on static graph. That's the way TensorFlow uh, implements the, uh, the automatic differentiation. PyTorch is, is doing something different. They are taking the data flows by overloading the operator, and then it perform automatic differentiation, but this time on dynamic graph. That's completely different from uh, TensorFlow. MindSpo is doing another approach. So MindSpo it perform automatic differentiation, this time based on source code conversion. So that's why the intermediate representation is pretty important, because it's where you can apply some unique optimization of the graph execution. So that's uh, pretty interesting. And so you also have directly in your code access to some flow control like while if for, if you want to interact with the automatic differentiation pattern. Another feature which is pretty interesting is all about the pipeline processing during training. So it means that on the floor is a streaming pipeline processing. So most of the time there are some framework where you have to load the data and then to execute the training. Here you can load the data and train the model at the same time on the, in a streaming way. So that's pretty interesting. Uh, and you have some specific interface API to do that. Um, for the graph execution, um, MindSpore is splitting in two dimensions. So basically the graph processing is separated in, uh, I would say three or uh, vertical divides. So it controls the execution, it controls the, the service, and the data management. And then it splits the states to, to execute the graph processing in preparation, splitting, optimization, compilation, loading, and execution. You don't have really the control on these steps, but it's just to show you that internally there are different steps where you can have some hook. If you want to be, for instance, you can be hooked on the optimi optimization layer. That's also pretty interesting. In terms of dev tools, uh, one of the tools that I used is Mind Insight. And in this tool, you have actually different tools included. The first tool is the training dashboard. So it means that you can ex execute the training on, on the model directly in, the, uh, in Mind Insight and seeing the result of the, uh, of the training. And a second thing is the profiler. This is an example of a profiler. Yeah? is a screenshot of a profiler where you can see this is the time spent on different function of your processing. And finally, the debugger that allows you also to drill down into your training model just to see, okay, this data is not accurate. And so I, I'm gonna change uh, this way or this way. So all of these different sub tools are including in Mind Insight. So this is a quick example that I, uh, I run on uh, uh, on MindSpot, uh, I'm gonna show you uh, just after the location on my GitHub if you want to download and try yourself. So the first thing is I took this uh, Docker image of MindSpot. So you have different e Docker images depending on the, uh, the hardware where you want to run. So in my case, I use uh, MindSpot CPU, but you can find uh, the same for a GPU or for um, Huawei Ascent processor or whatever. So in my case, I, I took the CPU one because I, I was running on my laptop. So I, I, I took this one. Then I just started the Docker image like this. So nothing special, just provide run and uh, network and it's done. And then you can, this is a, a very simple line in Python that allows you to check if your MindSpore installation is fine or not. So you just do import MindStore and, and run check. And then you have some details about the version of MindSpore you are using and the kind of architecture you, where you are re running it. And if you want to start Mind Insight inside the Docker image, you, you can directly do Mind Insight start with a port number and then it's done. And so basically it's what you have. So this is Mind Insight just freshly started, nothing yet ran. Uh, I just uh, started my uh, dashboard. And then the first thing that you're gonna do in, uh, in MindSpore is to define your running context. So the running context is basically where you define uh, the running mode. So if you are in pipeline, in streaming or not, uh, the backend information, so basically the, the kind of data set you're gonna use. And most important, it's the hardware information. So you can see there that I'm running into CPU by default. 
So basically, I just using my argument, and so I created my, the context there. And so you can see the context is graph mode. So I'm going to do graph processing, and uh, I'm running on CPU. So this is the, the first step that you need to create is your running context. And then once you have your running context, the first, the second step is basically to load your data sets. So to, to load the data set, basically you're going to use the mindsport.dataset API. So the data set API are uh, an API to allows you to load the data set, but that allows you also to map, to do some kind of map reduce function and to spread the processing on different machines. So you can see is what I'm doing there. I'm doing his there, I loading this data set, and this is the number of power worker that I want. So if I, uh, because I, I'm, remember I'm running on my single uh, laptop, so I only have one executor basically. But if you were running on multiple machines, then you can uh, increase the number of parallel workers. So this is all the API to uh, load the data set, do the data augmentation if you need, uh, and, and the mapping and the formatting. Once it's done, you're gonna create the model. Reuse the model or create the model. So basically, what, it's what we name the cell. So cell is the base class in Python that allows you to create any kind of a neural network, basically. So basically a model. So this is my example of a model. So I don't do into the details. You can take a look again on my code, but uh, just to, uh, to show you that the, uh, the construct method allows you to construct basically the model. Uh, the, once you have a model, then you have to train the model. So we have a data set, we have a model reusing it or, or that you created, and then you want to uh, train the model. Basically, uh, you're going to use the model.train API. So model.train is just training the model. So this is an example to how to train the model. And it's also here that you can define the number of parallels if you want to spread the, the training on multiple executors. So this is uh, what I'm doing there. And another thing that you can do is to create some kind of callback. So a callback uh, allows you to call some of your function at some point in the, in the model training. So if you want to react when you, you raise a number of processing or whatever. And finally, we have, so we have a data set, we have a model, we train our model and we want to validate the model. So what we do is basically we create a new data set but we, we're gonna submit to your model. And so in the model, we're gonna use a function predict that will compare that what you provide and what you expect. So you define some kind of assertion and you can validate that your assertion are satisfied or not. So if you want to take a look on this example, it's directly on my GitHub, mindspore-samples. You can, you can uh, freely access it. If you want to execute yourself, so you, you execute your Docker, the uh, Mindspore Docker image, and then in, in this Docker image, eventually you have to install some requests, uh, some additional uh, Python uh, module. So if you use pip, for instance, so this is the request, and then you just have to execute Python linet.py, and then it will do exactly what, what we discussed. So, Loading the data set, downloading the data set from, uh, from some repository on the internet. And so executing the, creating the model, training the model and executing the model. And, and you should have something like this at the end, which is the accuracy of your model. So you can try yourself. You can try on CPU. If you have some GPU, why not? You can, uh, something which is pretty interesting with, with Mindsport, this code, you can easily use exactly the same code and execute not on CPU, but on GPU. You don't have to change anything, just the execution mode you, you, you remember in the context. I put CPU, you, you put GPU, and it's done. Nothing has to change, so that's pretty convenient. So stop with the uh, with code, and uh, now about the collaboration with uh, uh, different uh, industry and uh, what we are looking for with Mindsport, but what's the next steps now? Uh, so the first thing is, we do a lot of collaboration with industries, researchers, and open source partners. So to give you some numbers, um, in terms of industry, we are an application in more than 50 projects. Uh, when I say application, is running application, is production-ready application, uh, 
really. So in very different domains, uh, finance, healthcare, manufacturing, a uh, lot, lot of different uh, domains. In terms of technologies, ecosystems. So today, as I said, we have 160 plus models, uh, pre-trained models. We have all around 300 papers. I don't remember the number I just checked. Uh, it was last week and uh, I don't remember exactly the number, but it's more than 300. And about open source, uh, so we have on the uh, Giddy and, and GitHub, we have 2,200 people uh, contributors on, on Mindspo, which is pretty large. Uh, we we have also have around 20 uh, interested group that working on Mindspo. Uh, to, for, for true, it's mostly, this domain is mostly in China right now but we're extending uh, this application in, uh, in Europe and that's why we are here. Uh, so this is uh, the current state. In terms of open source, because we are all pretty fan of the open source. So Mindspo is open source since 2020. Uh, it's under the Apache license. Fully all components are under the Apache license. So uh, that's pretty uh, interesting. What uh, we are looking for now is to extend the global of open source community around Mindspo. And we are uh, discussing about some potential collaboration with open source foundations, uh, especially Eclipse Foundation, we are, we are here together. Uh, Ace Open Lab for sure, and why not AR for you? That could be pretty interesting as well. If you are looking for some resources, this is the official website, uh, Giti and the GitHub Mirror, but basically the same and the main list if you want to join and, uh, and participate. If you have any questions. Thank you. Thank you, Jean-Baptiste. You're welcome. So, Philippe, you have a question? Go ahead, as we, you, we can answer the uh, question as we transition to the next. I keep, uh, I keep a mic then, <laughs> go ahead. Yeah, but that's, that's the, the first target today is to optimize the model training and, and be much more performant than all the potential framework. That, that's the first module, to, simply because today in terms of features, I mean, all the feature we can develop is mostly about efficiency and accuracy. From, from a user, end user standpoint, I mean, the API are basically the same. If you compare PyTorch, TensorFlow, and Mindspo in terms of end user API, quite, quite the same. But on the other hand, where we are looking for a lot of optimization and, and performances and, and differentiation is really about the model training and accuracy. Oh, okay, sorry about that, sorry. Another question? The last one. Last one. <laughs> good, good, good. Go ahead with the platform. You have Maybank training, so you can full time of training and stuff. And you have also efficiency improvement for the interact. Can you repeat the question? Yeah, so do, do we have, um, um, optimization on the inference, that's basically the question. Um, yeah, yeah, we do, but uh, I mean, today the main difference if we compare with all the framework, deep learning frameworks, is basically that we provide a, a bunch of pre-trained models. A and in these models, we include some inference optimization. So that's not directly in the framework itself, it's more on the model, on the models that we propose by default. Exactly. But the good news is that we have another talk, and after the other talk, we have a copyright. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. Thank, Thank you. you.